Hi everyone. So we're going to talk about the weighing by difference exercise that you do on the first day of lab. Now, you might be concerned that I'm not wearing any gloves or a lab coat. That's because it's our first day of lab. We don't expect you to have any of that stuff. That's why we are going to work with sodium chloride and for the density exercise, nice inert metals. So we are going to talk about weighing by difference first. This is our analytical balance. You see it has four decimal places. Each decimal place increases the cost of the balance rather exponentially. I think these are about $2,000 a piece as of 2024. As a result, we would like to keep them working for a long time. They're a significant investment. One way to do that is to use a weighing bottle, which is this little glass bottle. How to use a weighing bottle? You might think that you would just put it in here and then take your chemicals and shovel it in. Doing that completely obviates the point of the weighing bottle. Instead, here is our flask that we're going to put our stuff in. I'm only going to do one because this is just a demonstration video. You will have four of these. This is a 125 milliliter Erlenmeyer flask. So you'll need one of these scoops and you'll need your sodium chloride. So first thing you do is you put some sodium chloride in, maybe fill it enough to cover the bottom. And then you put this on the balance. When using the balance, you want to make sure that the doors are shut. This is sensitive enough to detect variations in air pressure. When you see this little icon over here and the numbers stay steady, you're good. So we have 14.571. Oh. <laughs> Sorry about that. 14.5471 grams. I'm entering that into my Excel spreadsheet. Now, I want to figure out how much needs to go in here. I need to transfer 0.25 grams. What's 0.25 grams off of this? 14.2971. Now, you'll see me handling this with my bare hands. That's because it is the first day. As I said, we don't expect you to have PPE. Some people consider this a form of bad practice. However, for our purposes, it's okay, but do be advised you may have a chemistry teacher in the future that tells you don't do that, that you should wear gloves or handle it with a paper towel or a Kim wipe. So to transfer it in, we just gently spill a little out of our container and then put it back on the balance. Close the door and we type in our figure. 14.2756. Okay, we said we wanted about 14.29, so that's pretty close. It doesn't have to be exactly 0.25. You'll be here all day if you try to do that. So this is close enough. Now, what is the exact mass? Well, in Excel, we always start a formula with an equal sign. And you take the larger number, and you subtract from it the smaller number. And that is the difference. So we moved about 0.2715 grams of salt into our flask. So please note that nothing was transferred over the balance. This kept any salt from spilling on the balance. Salt, as you may know from your previous education or by experience, tends to rust metal very quickly. We would like to avoid that. And some of the things we work with in chemistry lab can attack metal even more potently than just salt. If, for example, when transferring it, I, oops, spilled a little on the bench, because it is just salt, I can clean it up with a moist paper towel, like so. Okay? If you aren't sure, either in this class or another one, whether you can clean up the chemical with a wet paper towel, then you should always check with the TA first about what to do if you spill something. So with all that said, I now have a clear visual example of what 0.25, well, 0.27 grams looks like. 
So when I make my next sample, I know about how much to shake out of here into here. The other thing to keep track of is that my final mass here should be my initial mass here. And then I will transfer some more into my next flask, mass it, and record that. And then that number will go here, and so on. So, I've entered the rest of my numbers. As we can see, for example, in this case, if you have a trailing zero, Excel will just round it off. That's okay. But notice that my initial mass is the final mass of the previous trial. Now we want to calculate the amount of salt. We've done it here. What we could do is by hand equals, and then you can either click or type the cell address of each one. And if you do it in the right order, it works better. That's something that you need to watch out for. You always go that one minus that one. Or, if you see this little green square down here, you can click on it, hold the mouse button down, drag it, and then Excel will happily fill in the formulas for you, scrolling down the selected cells as shown here. So, how well did I do figuring this out? First, you want to find the average. Excel makes this very easy. You type equals average and then select your cells like so. So our average mass transferred was 0 0.2609. Now I want the standard deviation. If you've ever done statistics or look through the, or you've already had a chance to look through the manual, you've seen the formula for standard deviation. It's horrifying. We don't make you do that by hand. Instead, Excel makes it very easy. STDEV. Don't use any of the fancier functions that have a dot and a letter because they do other calculations that we don't do in general chemistry. So make sure that you are selecting the same cells that the average takes, but do not select the average itself. That will skew your numbers. Finally, we do the relative standard deviation. Relative standard deviation is the standard deviation divided by the average mass of the salt. You can think of it as a form of normalizing that standard deviation which can be thought of as basically this number plus or minus this. And that tells you how precise your numbers are. This puts it in terms that you can look at in a second and understand how precise the data is. We use, we multiply by a thousand because our unit is parts per thousand here. Finally, we do our percent error. Percent error is a little bit of a complicated formula, but once you get used to it, it's quite simple. It is the absolute value, ABS, of the average in this case, minus our expected value. We expected to move 0.25 grams of salt each time. And then you divide that difference by the expected value again, times 100, because it's a percent. And so we are within 4.36%. Now, why do we calculate these things? Well, we find the average because we have a whole bunch of data points, and individually they don't tell us a whole lot. However, the relative standard deviation and the percent error give us very important information. The relative standard deviation tells us how precise our data is. That is, how close are these numbers to each other? 76 PPT for something like this is not bad. It's about average. And it suggests some degree of care was taken with the experiment. If this were 760, then you have almost random numbers. If it's even higher than that, then your numbers are just all over the place. Precision is how close numbers are to each other. Lower relative standard deviation means they are less far apart from each other and so your numbers are more tightly packed together. The percent error tells you the accuracy, how far off you are from this desired value, or theoretical value, or expected value. These are all terms that can be used when discussing the percent error formula. So we expected to move 0.25 grams. 
The way I like to explain it to students is, imagine this is the number of points off a test, especially if they're concerned on whether it's a good percent error. A 94 or a 96 on a test is pretty good. So I got a 96 for my moving salt test. Now, could you make these numbers smaller? Absolutely. However, there's a trade-off. To do so means you have to take more time and more care on each one. At some point, you are putting in more effort to get this number to exactly 0.25 than it's worth. For general chemistry, this is more than good enough. The important thing is that you record exactly what your mass is, that you record it to all four decimal places on the balance, and that you report it faithfully. You could spend time and spend three hours doing one trial. We don't recommend that. You know, this is just general chemistry. This is good enough. You're not designing a uh, spacecraft that has to make it back from lunar orbit. For that, then you probably want these numbers a whole lot better. But for the first couple abs of Gen Chem, you'll be fine.